So you're considering making a move to Tampa, Florida? Well, in today's video, I'm going to take you around town and show you some places that are close to the beaches that would be considered a little bit more budget friendly. we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. We also make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. So if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you go down below, hit that subscribe button, and click the little bell. That way you can be notified every time we make a video just like this and you don't have to go chasing it down. All right, so in today's video, I really wanted to put something together that I would consider a little bit more budget friendly. And I want to start by using this term uh, budget friendly and define what it actually means. Because listen, I know that not everybody's budget is going to equal up to the numbers that we're going to share today. And if you saw the thumbnail, you know, I'm talking about $500,000 or less, which, you know, as, as a young kid growing up in the suburbs of Detroit, I only knew people who lived in mansions that, that cost that kind of money. Well, in 2023, unfortunately, almost everything costs that money. Well, at least it feels that way. So when in today's video, what I really wanted to do is break down areas that we consider a little bit more budget friendly uh, in Pinellas County. And if you're new to the Tampa Bay area, uh, Pinellas County is the peninsula that is west of Tampa Bay just west of Tampa, if you cross the bridge there, and it has our beautiful Gulf Coast beaches like Clearwater and St. Pete Beach and Madeira Beach and all these beautiful beaches that you can see on TripAdvisors that are ranked, you know, one of the best beaches in America almost annually, which is wonderful. But here's what I know. That's not attainable or affordable for almost everyone. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's probably less affordable and less attainable to most people. So where do the rest of us live? And y'all, just so you know, I am the rest of us and I live on Pinellas County. I do not live on the beaches as much as I would love to. I have a home beach, it's Indian Rocks Beach. I am so in love with my beach, but we just could not swing it. When Kate and I moved our family down here a little over four years ago, man, we fell in love with that beach and I would have given anything. I probably would have sold a leg to be able to get over there, but it wasn't going to be enough money. So we needed to make sure that we were able to get a place that made sense to us and our budget. And my goal in today's video is to break down the five best cities in Pinellas County for under $500,000. All right, so the first place I want to hit is one of my favorite areas to go to. Now, it is one of the places that Kate and I absolutely love to have date nights on. Um, I think it's one of the most uh, absolutely exciting places to be, and it has its own vibe. And I'm talking about St. Petersburg, Florida. And if you've never been to St. Petersburg, Florida, you are absolutely missing out. Because I got to tell you, I didn't know hardly anything about St. Petersburg when I moved down to this area. I was completely ignorant to the area. I had heard some things. I heard that St. Pete was pretty sketchy and that you gotta be careful when you go down there. And when I went down there, I was blown away. The the diversity, the art, the entertainment, the dining, uh, the shopping, there's so much that happens in St. Petersburg. The food markets, the, you know, being right on the bay, the St. Pete Pier, it's just absolutely, it's got this thing where the city feels alive. And it's a pretty big little city is the best way I would describe it, you know? And if you, you're not familiar with the area, if you look at Tampa and then you head to the Southwest, you cross a little bridge called the Gandhi, or you can come over to the Howard Franklin, and that'll take you to right downtown St. Petersburg. And St. Petersburg is it's like a grid style system and we have Central Avenue and that's where everything kind of pops off. Central, first, second, third, all that stuff is happening downtown. And it's just such a cool place to go hang out. There's murals and artwork everywhere. And if you go down there on a Friday night, I mean, the place is alive and it's so much fun to be around. You know, you've got the sunken gardens, like I said, the St. Pete Pier. We've got um, the, the Tampa Bay Rays who play down there, the, uh, the Rowdies, which is a professional soccer club, you know, there's so much to do in the city and it just always has something going on and it has something going on for everybody. So it's a place that we really love to go. Kate and I like to make the triangle, you know, where we go hang out and, and have date nights. We go to Tampa and go downtown, go to Armature Works, you know, go down to Sparkman's Wharf. There's just so many beautiful areas in Tampa. Then we'll go to St. Pete because we love that. We get some of the best tacos. Shout out to Casitas Tacos. 
tacos. Y'all, you gotta go check them out. They're great. Your churros are amazing. <laughs> but having said that, and, and then we'll go up to Dunedin, and that's a great little marine town that we like to go hang out as well. But I just think that St. Petersburg has so much to offer. So what I wanna do is get into some of the stats, right? You're wondering like, how much does it cost? What does it look like? All right, so St. Petersburg has a population of 258,000 people. It's, it's a pretty big little city, like I said, but it does take up a pretty good percentage of Pinellas County. I don't know the exact number, but looking at it from a geographic perspective, it's probably 25% of the county is taken up by St. Petersburg alone. So it, there's a lot of people there, right? 258,000 people. The the average home is a three bedroom, two bath, 1,389 square foot, 490,000 home. 1,389 square feet is not large. When you look at how all the new constructions are built, you know, most homes are at least 1,800 square feet. You know, m most homes that people are looking for are around 2,000 or more. So, you, you know, as you can see, the homes aren't very large and that's because a lot of them are older. We have homes in St. Pete that are 100 years old. You know, these wooden structures that have survived, which is amazing when you think about it because, you know, we do have hurricanes in the area and strong tropical storms. And, you know, Tampa has been very fortunate. I've shared this before. We're going on year 105, I think, of not having a direct hit from a hurricane. Shout out to the Lord's work there. <laughs> um, pretty impressive. But you you know, the dollar per square foot, y'all, it doesn't go as far as one might think. So keep that in mind, $490,000. Now, I want to share with you guys, you know, it comes under, under that 500 mark, which I think is important. But I want to share with you the cheapest sale that, it, that happened in the month of February, making this video just be right at the beginning of March. And I want to share the most expensive sale with you here. So uh, there was a condo that sold in St. Petersburg for $22,800. And no, don't call me asking for that because that's the unicorn. Somebody got it, <laughs> right? That's pretty darn cheap. And the most expensive sale was $2.8 million. And that was right on the water downtown. So when you look at downtown St. Pete and you're looking over uh, the bay, right over the marina, that's exactly where that sold. But St. Pete is a sleeper, y'all. Go check it out. All right, the second city on our list in Pinellas County is going to be Seminole, Florida. Seminole, I think, is one of those great areas that is really well designed. It's very close to the water. Actually, as a matter of fact, if you live in Seminole, you can actually butt up to the intercoastal waterway. And for those of you who may not be familiar with Pinellas County, those beautiful white sandy beaches that you think of when you think Clearwater and St. Petersburg Beach, or St. Pete Beach, sorry, um, those are all barrier islands, right? Meaning that they protect the mainland, so to speak, which is a peninsula, again, Pinellas County here, from the, the elements. And um, that intercoastal waterway is pretty cool because if you live on the intercoastal, you can actually have a dock, which is awesome, <laughs> right? Unlike the Gulf Coast. So Seminole actually gives you some options that way. Will you find one for 500,000? You won't find a single family home. Can you find a condo? Potentially, it's definitely on the radar, so it's something to take note of. Um, but what's really cool about this city is it's got great shopping. You've got the Seminole City Center, which is awesome. It gives you access to Park Boulevard, which you know I've got clients that have bought homes in, in, uh, in Seminole that are four or five minutes from Madeira Beach, which is absolutely incredible, incredible right? I've got clients that have bought homes as close as six or seven minutes away from Indian Shores Beach, which is just absolutely beautiful, y'all. You know, public parking gives you access directly to the beach. Stunning. My wife takes the kids down there. Indian Rocks Beach is our beach, but when they meet with the homeschool uh, co-op, they go down to Indian Shores because there's public parking, there's a clean bathroom, and it's got really easy access. And that beach usually isn't busy. Shh, don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> but this is a small little city. It's about 19,000 residents. It has a good mix. Some of these areas are unincorporated. So if you're looking for Airbnbs, guess where you can find them? In Seminole. Not the entire city of Seminole. As a matter of fact, Airbnbs aren't legal in Seminole. But if you live in unincorporated Pinellas County, now you can sneak in under that radar. So I think that that's pretty cool because I just had clients. We just helped two clients through this process in the last two weeks alone. So if that interests you, do not hesitate to reach out. Oh, and all of my contact information is listed down below. There's my telephone number. Um, you can DM me on Instagram. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you can reach out directly and schedule a time that's most convenient for you. So let's bust into some of these stats here in Seminole. The average home is a three bedroom, two bath, 1,524 square foot, and it's sold for $409,000, y'all. That's pretty good, but here's what I'll say. Those are, I feel like those are really hard to come by. So when you're looking, you're probably gonna be more like that 450 range. So I just wanna give you perspective from what I'm seeing right now in the market. 
whenever you're watching this video, if it's in the future, just know that that may have changed. But right now, real time, that's what's going on in the market. I want to share with you some of these cool stats here. Um, the cheapest property that sold, the least expensive, was a $60,000 condo. So again, I think that's a really fair value. If you want to be within minutes of the beach, you can do it. And you can find something as low as $60,000. Now listen, that house, that, or I'm sorry, that condo needed a lot of love, so keep that in mind. You know, that was the purchase price, but it probably wasn't the overall cost of ownership there, so just keep that in mind. The most expensive was a $1.4 million, four and a half acre home that gave you direct access to, to uh, Boca Siga Bay, which is nuts, by the way. I mean, talk about a fine. That thing also needed a lot of love, but can you imagine getting four and a half acres that gives you direct access to Boca Siga Bay? I mean, that's absolutely incredible, y'all. All right, the third one on our list today is Dunedin, Florida. And I really struggled with this when I first saw it. Um, I was like, what is Dunedin? I don't know what Dunedin <laughs> means. And it's spelled D-U-N-E-D-I-N, -E Dunedin, right? Uh, and, and it's Scottish. I didn't know this. I learned this, uh, you know, when I, when I started exploring the city, but this is one of those areas. And I think I mentioned it up front that Kate and I love Dunedin. Dunedin doesn't have a proper beach. It is on the Gulf of Mexico, but it doesn't have a proper beach, which is very unique, but it's a marina town. So when you come into downtown Dunedin, there's a main street there, just like every other main street USA, but man, it's so much fun. All the shops and restaurants and dining and entertainment, people walking up and down, the Pinellas Trail attaches directly to it, and it dead ends right at the marina there. So you can see these beautiful ships, you can watch a Gulf Coast sunset, and there's a park right down at the end, which is amazing. And this is that city that Kate and I absolutely really fell in love with. When we first moved down here, we tried to buy a home in Dundee. And as a matter of fact, we tried to buy two. Neither one of those offers got accepted. <laughs> and we ended up moving into to Largo, just over the Indian Rocks Beach Bridge. And we still love Dunedin. It is one of those great little coastal towns. I love it. The uh, Blue Jays play spring training there at, at TD Ballpark, which is awesome. Like I said, the downtown, there's parks that are absolutely beautiful, covered by these, these gorgeous old growth oak trees. You've got access to Honeymoon Island. I mean, it's just a wonderful place to go and spend time especially if you're not quote unquote a beach baby. You know, I think it's amazing. They're top rated schools. Um, and it's just one of those places when you look at the general area, I think niche.com rates the entire city an A on their, their livability score because it's just an incredible place to live, y'all. So let's get into some of these stats. There are 36,000 residents in Dunedin, which I think is great. It makes it feel quaint, but not overwhelming. You know, there's just enough going on to, to keep somebody who needs an, an, you know, an active lifestyle to be entertained entertain, but not where it's overwhelming, like I said, which I think is great. The average home is a three bedroom, two bath. It is uh, 1,497 square feet. And the average home in Dunedin sold for $467,000 in February, 2023. So still under that $500,000 range. Again, top rated schools, A rated community, marina town, parks all over the place. Great shopping, great dining. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all in Dunedin, Florida. And the cheapest home that sold there was a $140,000 condo. So again, a really good value when you're looking at, you know, $467,000 average price point. The fact that you can get in there for $160,000, I think that's pretty cool. And the most expensive sale was a $1.8 million single family home. So definitely a wide berth there. There's some beautiful homes on the intercoastal that would sell for more than that for sure. You know, just to give you frame of reference. So you do have a really wide berth, so to speak. But man, Dunedin is an amazing town. You know, Dunedin is on our date night hit list. We love going down to Casa Tina's. I mean, this is a beautiful Colombian restaurant. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I love going down there. The food is delicious. I would strongly encourage you to check that out while you're down there. All right, the next city on our list is Gulfport. And hey, if you're getting any value out of today's video, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Click that little bell. That way you can be notified every time we drop a new video just like this. But also, if you've got a favorite city and it's not one of these, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know what that is, right? Because everybody's experience is different. Everybody's taste is a little different, but I love sharing this stuff. So what's up with Gulfport? Now, this is one of those little cities that I think is absolutely incredible. Uh, Gulfport is right on the, again, it's right on Boca Sica Bay. So it's in the, like the southeast uh, quadrant of Pinellas County. Great little area. They've got a, a public beach in the bay 
where you've got uh, volleyball. They, they do volleyball tournaments there, which I think is great. A public park right at the end. There's all these bars and restaurants right there. You can go down Main Street. They've got one of the best Italian restaurants, I think, in the entire county down there. It's incredible. Great little brewery down there as well. I think it's definitely worth checking out um, if you're in town. Uh, and it's beautiful. And what's cool about the, the beach there is you're sitting there checking out a Gulf Coast sunset. You can actually see the Don Cesar Hotel, which is the like the pink dream, they call it, right? Like it's phenomenal. And when the sun's coming down and like you see the bay and all the boats out there, it's just an absolute riot. But one of the things that makes this town really cool is again, you know, St. Petersburg has a lot of art going on, but Gulfport has a really strong art district as well. And they have this parade of homes every year. They do parade of, a parade of homes tour. And there are people in the community who have literally decorated their homes, a lot of them. They are very unique. I mean, the first time I went down there, I saw a home and it the home was it reminded me of a Disney movie where they were doing like the whole French Quarter thing. That's the vibe it get, and that's the best I can describe it, y'all. I'm not, you know, art is not <laughs> my first language, but I thought it was very unique, and people take the time to recognize that they're a quaint little coastal community. Now, a lot of the homes in, in Gulfport are older, so that's something to keep in mind. You know, as you go down there, you're not gonna find the latest and greatest. And that's the case with most of, of, of Pinellas County. And, you know, feel free to reach out to me and ask about that. But like, there are very few new homes. If they are, they're very expensive. Again, we talked about the dollar per square foot thing. But, you know, just to share a little bit more, uh, the population of Gulfport is a quaint 12,000 people. So it's a tiny little community. You know, it's not big from a geographic perspective either, but it is a fun place to go hang out. I think it's a great little city. You definitely want to check it out. Now, the average home is uh, sold for $423,000 down there. So still pretty good value. But again, we're a three, two, you know, three bedroom, two bath. Um, and they're down to almost 1200 square feet down there. So they definitely get smaller. So keep that in mind as you start to look a little bit further south. Uh, now, the, the least expensive property that sold down in Gulfport was $102,500, so again, a great value. Uh, and then the most expensive that sold down there was just over a million at $1,015,000. So again, pretty wide range when you look at Pinellas County overall, but you definitely want to check out Gulfport because they got a little marina too. You can launch your kayak. There's a, a little a nature preserve there. Y'all, well, go check out Gulfport. It's awesome. And number five on our list today is Clearwater, Florida. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, we said we're not going to be on the beaches. Well, we're not. We're not on Clearwater Beach because that is different than Clearwater. Okay, so I just want to give some perspective. They are detached, right? You have to go over a bridge, the Clearwater Causeway, to get out to Clearwater Beach, and you cannot find the average home for less than $500,000 on Clearwater Beach. So we are staying inland on the peninsula here. We're going to talk about what is happening in Clearwater. So Clearwater is a town of about 116,000 residents. It's a very good-sized city. Um, Clearwater actually has the Clearwater St. Pete Airport in it. It's great. You've got the Courtney Campbell Causeway, which will take you um, over the bay, to downtown Tampa. Actually, they'll take you right by the airport. It's very convenient in that respect. Clearwater also has the only Costco in Pinellas County, which is super important to some people, my wife included, y'all. <laughs> we are a Costco shopper, so she'll drive the 25 minutes one way to get to Costco because it's the only one there because she loves shopping there, right? There's Walmart, uh, uh, Sam's Club, uh, BJ's, Whole Foods, the Philadelphia Phillies play baseball in spring training in Clearwater. You know, obviously they're the, the beaches when you go over um, the bridge on the causeway there and you can get down to one of the most beautiful beaches in the entire country. It's phenomenal. But the city has a lot to offer too. There is a ton of shopping. You've got uh, Countryside Mall, you've got Clearwater Mall. You know, there's plenty to do in the area as well. It's one of those areas that really drew people for a long time. As a matter of fact, there's almost 4 million visitors that visit Clearwater every single year, which makes it, you know, very attractive in terms of short-term rentals, which again, y'all, if you're calling me about that, there's a couple things you need to know. Clearwater has a 30-day rental policy, but did I mention earlier that there's actually an unincorporated part of uh, Pinellas County that allows you to do that? Yes, there is. And there's also specific zoning areas where you can do that as well. So if you'd like to know more about that, do not hesitate to reach out to me, y'all. You know that all that information is down below, but I want to make sure I mention that because I get a ton of calls from people who say, I want to buy a, a, an Airbnb in Clearwater and it's getting more and more difficult to get those short-term rentals. You got to have somebody in your back pocket who really understands what's going on down there. So if that is something that is of interest to you, do not hesitate to reach out. But let's jump into you know, some of these stats in Clearwater, right? 116,000 
15,000 residents. Uh, a three bedroom, two bath is the average size home at 1,390 square feet again, right? So these things shrink down a lot. Now, here's what's good. The average home sale in the month of February, 2023 was $338,000. So it's actually really affordable right? Something to definitely consider and take a look at. The, the least expensive home sale there was a $105,000 condo. So again, definitely a good value. I saw one that sold in January for $60,000. So, you know, if you're looking for those deals, they can be found. Just be prepared that it's probably going to be one of those cash offer situations and you're still going to have to invest quite a bit of money to get it up to standards. But y'all, you know, the Lord is not making any new oceanfront property and, Pin and Pinellas County is as close you're going to get if you're not living on the water. So I would encourage you to check that out. The most expensive sale in Clearwater last month was a $1.35 million home. And, you know, there's $6 million home listed over there right now. Clearwater is a stunning area, especially when you get down on the beaches or the intercoastal waterway. Again, it has so much to offer to you. And hey, I hope you got a tremendous amount of value out of this video today. I love doing videos like this. If you want to see more videos, you know, giving accessibility in terms of price ranges, you know, drop that in the comments below. I've done the most expensive cities in Pinellas County. Nine out of 10 of them were on the beach, of course. So definitely we're taking a look at, we'll make sure that we'll link those uh, videos actually right here. And until next time, and as always go out and live that Tampa life.